Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, so we are talking about vectors and uh, today's lecture will be about a very important inequality which uh, exists in um, vectors which we are considering. Well, right now we are considering vectors in n-dimensional space. Um, that's Euclidean space, basically. Um, it has a Euclidean uh, measure. But uh, in theory, uh, there are other kinds of vectors. And this equation, although I will not explain it today, it really expands to other kinds of vectors. For example, certain functions can be considered as elements in the linear vector space. Um, and integrals can be considered instead of summation of uh, coordinates, etc. So, in any case, it's a very important equation. Um, probably the first person who came up with it was French mathematician Cauchy. Um, well, right now it's called um, inequality uh, Cauchy, Schwarz, and sometimes Bunyakovsky. Well, these probably Schwarz and Bunikovsky are other mathematicians which are considering this particular equation, inequality, sorry, in, 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 in equation. Um, in certain other cases, not really something simple. And uh, maybe Cauchy was the one who was actually invented it in simpler cases. I don't really know the history, it doesn't really matter. So uh, sometimes I will call it just Cauchy inequality, sometimes Cauchy Schwarz, sometimes Cauchy. Schwarz Bunyakovsky, um, and that's basically the same thing. Okay, so what is it? Um, okay, uh, before I start, let me just mention that this particular lecture is part of the course Mass Plus and Problems. The whole course is presented on unizor.com. It's a continuation of the course called Mass for Teens. Well, Mass 14 is kind of a theoretical course, and Mass Plus and Problems is concentrated more on, well, certain extension to the theory, uh, like today, for example, it's an extension, um, and uh, different kinds of problems which are not really addressed in the main course. In the main course, main, uh, Mass 14, I'm usually presenting the problems which are kind of illustrate the theory. Uh, in this course, I'm going a little bit out of the box in certain cases. Now, um, I would recommend you to watch this lecture on the website unizor.com. So, once there you go to this course, then you, uh, you can choose the category vectors. And this is one of the le lectures, it's lecture number 06 in, uh, in that category. Now, why? Well, obvious reason the website is totally free, there are no advertisement, um, sign-in is uh, optional, uh, so you don't even have to do that. Um, and what's very important is that every lecture on the website is supplemented with very detailed notes. These notes are like a textbook, so consider your textbook is basically divided into the same way how I present the lecture. So every lecture has a piece of a textbook which relates to this lecture. It's exactly the same material, maybe presented in certain cases slightly differently. Maybe there are some nice pictures uh, which I cannot really reproduce here. Whatever. But anyway, the uh, ability to read the same text and watch the lecture where I explain basically the same material, I think is a very beneficial thing. In addition, um, it, at least in the course, uh, which is basically prerequisite for this mass routines, I do have exams, which you can take <coughs> excuse me, as many times as you want, just to verify how um, comfortable you are with theoretical material. So if you go, the, uh, go, go for the main theoretical course, mass routines, take exams. There are no restrictions you have something like four, five, six um, problems in one exam. So you basically have to solve all of them, they're all multiple choice, and at the end you will be presented with number of problems which you have received, which you have uh, correctly solved. Now, um, 
I do not specifically um, uh, say which one is right, which one is wrong. I think you should really strive for basically having all of them 100% solved correctly. And that would be your goal. Okay, now back to business. So what is um, the inequality which we are talking about, Cauchy inequality? Now, it's very simply presented as scalar product of two vectors is less than equal to their product of their magnitudes. Now, in um, simple algebraic sense, you all remember a plus b over 2 should be um, greater than square root of a b and, and less than a square plus b square over 2 square root. This is arithmetic average this is geometric average and this is quadratic average right so basically um, it's very similar to this one and um, if uh, the um, the proof of this is very simple we already covered that so I would probably consider this Cauchy inequality to be an extension of, of this plain algebraic um, inequality. Okay, so now this is an inequality which is based on properties of scalar product and definition of um, magnitude of the vectors. So they're coming directly from the definition of abstract vector space. I'm not really, um, uh, I'm not really relying on concrete implementation of that vector space. So um, anyway, let's talk about concrete vector space. We are talking about n-dimensional vector space, where every vector is basically a representation of n numbers and real numbers so we're talking about real numbers <coughs> so it's something like a n-dimensional Euclidean space now s vector is also a combination of n real numbers now, in terms of um, particular components of these vectors, how this really looks like? Well, it looks like this. The uh, scalar, uh, scalar product is um, R1 S1 plus R2 S2 plus etc. plus Rn Sn. Now, the length of vector r is square root of r1 square plus r2 square plus etc. plus rn square. Or, sometimes we are <coughs> saying this is square root of r times r, scalar product. And s would be analogous. So these are basically straight from the definition, and I will use them as is. Now, this is positive or negative. This is always positive, right? Because it's the square root. And um, therefore, to prove this, or to prove a square of both sides, would be basically equivalent. Because if this is positive, then squaring both sides would be basically the same and if it's negative then it's definitely would be less than the positive number right so if i will prove it for a uh, square of this that would be suffi sufficient for uh, proving in this original form 
So what I'm going to prove is that r times s square would be less than or equal to uh, square times square. Now why do I do that? Well, because I don't like the square root here, right? Okay, so let's just prove this one. Now, how I'm going to do it? Here is a simple way. Consider the following. R1 x plus S1 square, where x is some real variable. Okay? Now, this is square, so it's a positive thing, right? Or, or zero, non-negative. Okay, let's do the same thing with R2 x plus S2 square plus etc plus Rn x plus Sn square so I know that this is non-negative thing, right? So everything is black. Okay, greater or equal to zero. Now what is this relative to x? It's a quadratic polynomial, right? x square, x square, x square. So it's a quadratic polynomial. Okay, let's express it in the terms of quadratic polynomial, like uh, p of x is equal to ax square plus bx plus c. I would like to express it in this particular way. Now, what is a? a is coefficient at x square. I will have x square here, 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 and here. Each one of them will contain r1 square, r2 square, rn square. So my a is equal to r1 square plus r2 square plus etc plus rn square, right? Okay, what will be coefficient b at x? 2r1 s1 x, 2r2 uh, s2 x, etc. So the coefficient at x, the b, would be 2 r1 s1 plus 2 r2 s2 plus etc plus 2 r n s n finally what would be the free coefficient c c is s1 square s2 square etc right okay great So now I know that this particular polynomial is always greater or equal to zero. And as a quadratic polynomial, um, it's represented graphically as a parabola, something like this. It can be actually like this, but definitely not like this. Because in this case, I would have negative path. So the parabola has no more than one uh, uh, solution uh, when my p of x is equal to zero. Now, what does it mean from the uh, theory of quadratic polynomial? Now, you remember that quadratic polynomial has discriminant, right? It's uh, b squared minus 4ac. Now, why? Well, uh, let me just remind you. Um, I do remember a certain formula, and the formula for solution to equation p of x is equal to 0 is 2a minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. Now, that's the formula for solution 
to equation p of x is equal to 0. Now, it means that if this is positive, then I will have two different solutions. Only if this is equal to 0, I have one solution. And if it's less than 0, I have no solutions. So this, when it's no solutions, and this, when I have one solution, are basically the case in this case, which means this must be less than or equal to 0, right? OK, great. Now let's think about what does it mean What does it mean? B square is this one. Now let's think about what is it. Well, this is obviously 2 times scalar product of R and S, right? R1S1 plus R2S1, etc. So that's my B. So B square is 4 scalar product of Rs square. Now what is A? A is obviously square of the magnitude of R vector. So minus 4 square magnitude of R vector. And C is square of the magnitude of B vector. Uh, of uh, S vector. And this is less than or equal to zero, right? So four we can cancel. This goes to the right, and I have that R S square less than R square S square. Now I can get rid of two basically. Because if squares are in this particular proportion, I can have square root of both sides. In this case, to be precise, I have to put absolute value um, uh, from uh, their uh, scalar product. And if that is true, that is true, definitely. So that's the proof, basically. That's the end of it. OK, now, I told you it's a very important inequality. Now, let me just mention two very important consequences of this. First, and both are geometrical, by the way. Now, first consequence is about triangles. Now, we all know that in geometry, sum of any two sides should be greater or equal to another side. Well, actually, you can say that for real triangle it's really greater. Equal is only if three points are on the same line and it's not really a triangle, it's kind of a pseudo triangle. So, we always have this uh, inequality and it's called triangle inequality. Now, again, it's expandable from two-dimensional case as I was just presenting on this whiteboard. It's definitely presentable in three dimension and actually in any dimension. So in any Euclidean space, this is actually true. Now, how to basically express it in vector form? Well, very easy. If this is vector, and this is vector, and this is vector. So let's say in this particular case, b plus c as vectors is equal to a, right? But I would like to prove that the lengths of the b plus the lengths magnitude of c should be greater or equal than magnitude of a. So if this is true, and this is basically a definition of triangle in our n-dimensional case, where a, b, and c are uh, uh, n-dimensional vectors, then I will have such an um, uh, inequality between their, their lengths, right? Okay. 
Fine. So let's go into our case. Let's try to prove this in our case. Let's say you have vector A, vector B, and vector A plus B. So this is the triangle. Vectors A and B can be any, because whenever there are any, any vectors, I one put one to another and then draw from the beginning of the first to the end of the of the second, my A plus B. Now from this, I would like to prove this triangle inequality. Okay, so let's just do this. A plus B. What's the length of it? Well, this is the square of the length, right? This is square of the length of AB. Well, let's open the parentheses. This is my scalar product. Vector times vector. That's the magnitude of A, and A plus B uh, squared. All right, but since it's um, scalar product, and scalar product, as we know from the previous lecture, has uh, commutative and distributive properties, that would be a times a plus b, which is a times a plus a times b plus b times a plus b, which is b times a plus b times b. Now these are commutative, so it's 2ab. This is a square, and this is b, magnitude of b square. Now, using this, using this, I can say that this is less than or equal to, so instead of a, b, if I will put the product of their magnitudes, I will definitely increase the whole thing, right? So let me start. This is a plus b square. Okay, now let me go this way. That's a square plus. So instead of 2ab scalar product, I will use uh, 2 uh, magnitude of a times magnitude of b. And b square. Now, what is this? Well, obviously, this is square of their sum, right? It's a number. It's a number. This is 2x plus 2xy plus y squared. That's x plus y squared, right? So, I have this. So, square of this length is less than or equal than square of sum of lengths. Well, we can have square root of both sides and I have exactly this. Uh, that would be less than plus this. So that's a triangle inequality in the n-dimensional space. Okay, now the next consequence is something which I think is important to justify one of the definitions which we made. Now, if you remember, we were introducing, using the scalar product and magnitude of vectors, we have introduced the angle between two vectors. If, if, if you have two vectors, R, R, R and S, um, we remember that from the scalar product of uh, vectors in two-dimensional cases. Uh, if you have a times b, their scalar product is actually length of a times length of b times cosine of angle between them. So that was how it was defined in two-dimensional case. Now in n-dimensional case, well we don't really know how to measure angles, but what, what we can do is we can just purely artificially say that the product, the scalar, scalar product of two vectors is equal to the same thing. 
So I'm introducing, I'm defining n go using this formula. Okay, fine. So I'm saying that angle between two vectors is such that its cosine is equal to r times s, the scalar product, divided by the product of their magnitudes. But is it a correct definition? Well, using this, I can say that this is definitely less than 1 and greater than minus 1, right? Since this is always by absolute value, if you remember we were talking about absolute value uh, during the, um, uh, our proof, we, were, we, we have come up with this because we have extracted square root from both sides. So if, if the uh, absolute value of uh, scalar product is less than product of magnitude, then this is always from minus 1 to 1 which means it's a correct definition of cosine which means we can definitely have an angle cosine of which is equal to whatever and this angle should be from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 am I right? no, probably it would be what is this? this is pi over 2 this is 0 no, it should be probably from, the, from 0 to pi yeah, from 0 to pi. 0 to pi. So if you have two angles, you can always find zero from 0 to pi, which is less than 180 degree. We are not talking about this angle. We are talking about this angle between two angles. So there is always the angle between them, which is less than by 180 degree. So in this angle, from this to this or from that to this, uh, that's exactly the same thing because cosine is um, an even function. So cosine of phi is equal to cosine of minus phi. Okay, so basically that's it. These are two important consequences, triangle inequality and the, well, legality, uh, sensibility, if you wish, of defining angle exactly using this kind of a formula because we are coming with number which can be really interpreted as a cosine. Well, that's it for today. So, thank you very much. You, um, I do encourage you to read the uh, notes for this lecture. As I said, you go to unisor.com, choose the course Mass Plus and Problems, go to the category Vectors, and this is vector number 06 lecture. That's it. Thanks very much and good luck.